welcome to the greatest cooking program on television. I'm yours truly, Anure Benitye. Today's program promises to be very, very exciting, like we always do it on this program. Love my kitchen? Beautiful, isn't it? This is MITV Kitchen. On MITV Kitchen, we have promised that we're going to bring you dishes from all over the world, not just Nigeria. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing on this program. Last week was wonderful. It was fantastic. I hope you watched. On today's program, we'll be bringing you something very exotic. Yes, when I tell you it's exotic, you have to believe me that it is exotic. We're bringing you sweet potato porridge. Yes, I, I just took a breath there so you can, it can sink in. You know, a lot of people think that sweet potatoes are just meant to be fried or just boiled with sauce or something. But on this program, we're going to show you a way to transform sweet potato into something very exotic. Now, the only way that you can actually get to find out is if you sit back with me on this watch as we go on that journey. Well, we'll take a short break when we come back. MITV Kitchen will definitely continue. Stay with me. Welcome back. You know, when we started this program today, I told you that we'll be bringing you an exotic dish, which is actually sweet potato porridge. And, you know, in the intro, I did say that a lot of people do not know that there are lots of ways that you can kill a cat. I'm not saying you should kill a cat. There are lots of ways that you can actually turn that seemingly simple potato into something very wonderful and delicious. So on this program today, we shall be bringing you that particular dish, sweet potato porridge. But you know the way we do it on this program. We have other segments, you know. We have the losing weight segment. What other segment? Food and health segment where we tell you foods and the health benefits that we have in them. And of course, the tip of the day. If you stay with me, you get to learn a lot on this class, MITV Kitchen. We not only teach you how to cook, we actually teach you how to live your life. We'll take a short break again. When we come back, it'll be at the other side of the food. Stay with me. Let us begin the day meal in the kitchen. And today we're preparing sweet potato porridge. <laughs> sweet potato porridge. And these are the ingredients we need to prepare this sumptuous, delicious, mouth-watering dish. We need palm oil. Number two, sweet potatoes. Of course, we need crayfish. Then, of course, ugu, salt to taste, seasoning, ground chili pepper, and, of course, dry fish with all the bones taken out. And, of course, we need our bomo shaki beef. That doesn't mean you cannot add any other thing that you desire to cook this food. And number 10, onion. So I have shown you all the ingredients that we need to prepare our dish for the day in the kitchen, which is sweet potato porridge. The next step is to show you how to go about it. Stay with me. Step one, wash your sweet potatoes thoroughly so you can get off all the sand when you begin to peel. Step two, after washing your sweet potato, you can begin to peel off the back of the potato. Step three, cut the sweet potatoes into small chunks, place in a pot, add fresh clean water and put on fire. Step four, add your chili pepper Pour in your palm oil, make sure it's not too much. Add your dried fish and next, add your crayfish. Step five, 
Chop up your beef, shaki, and pomo into tiny bits. And step six, add the diced up pomo, shaki, and beef to the pot already on the fire. Step seven, add your seasonings and salt to taste. Make sure that the salt that you add is not too much. As a black man, you are not supposed to eat too much salt. And step eight, chop up your onion. Make sure the sizes are very tiny. Pour all the chopped onion into the food on fire, then cover the pot. Well, if you're just joining us, we've done a lot, starting from step one to step two, from washing the sweet potatoes to make sure that all the sand is off, to peeling the sweet potato, cutting it up into bits and putting on the fire, adding all the tiny ingredients to chopping up, you know, the shaki, the pomo, and the beef that was used for cooking. And of course, we put everything on fire and we closed it up. We'll be right back. Welcome back. That's the first half of the cooking. The food is on fire, boiling, you know, every of the odd ingredients just bubbling and getting set, you know, for us to eat. But we have to take a short break now to bring you the food and health segment. When we come back, MIT of a Kitchen will definitely continue. Stay with me. Fish were the first vertebrae that appeared on earth. Vertebrates are animals with backbone. Being the first vertebrates on the planet, fish provided the basic body plan subsequently elaborated by hundreds of millions of years of evolution. So according to science, your great, great, great multiply by a billion grandmother was a small, meek fish of the Devonian period. Although most paleontologists wouldn't recognize them as true fish, the fish, like creatures, to leave an impression on fossil, appeared during the Middle Cambrian period, about 530 million years ago. Fishing is an ancient practice dating back to 40,000 years. Since the 16th century, fishing vessels have been able to cross oceans in pursuit of fish and since the 19th century, it has become to use larger vessels. Fishing in the modern times has provided employment to over 500 million people worldwide. Fish has two major variety, freshwater and saltwater fish, but they are divided into three basic groups, which include cartilaginous fish, bony fishes, and low-finned fishes. Sharks and rays have skeletons made from cartilage, not bone. The cartilage skeletons are more flexible than bone. Fishes are cold-blooded, ectothermic animals. Their internal body temperature is therefore the same as the surrounding water. Some species are referred to as diodromos, they are further described by the direction of their migration because some species of fish migrate between fresh water and marine environments to spawn. Fish that migrate from the sea to fresh water to spawn, for example, salmon, are described as anadromos. Fish that migrate from freshwater environment to the sea to spawn are referred to as catadromos. The evolutionary history of fish continued with the dominance of the jawed fish who were super predators. They dominated throughout the Silesian period for several dozen millions of years. Fish are largely distinguished from other animals by the adaptation to the environment, which is of course water. Fish physiology differs in some key ways from the physiology of animals that inhabit their kind, 
The major differences lies on how fish breathe or obtain oxygen and how they move through water. Like animals on ground, fish need oxygen to survive. The only problem is that water has only 2% of the amount of oxygen contained in air. In addition, oxygen levels decrease as water gets warmer and polluted or stagnant water has less oxygen as well. Fish get oxygen mainly through gills by opening and closing their mouth. Fish move in water with their gills which are filled with thousands of tiny blood vessels that absorb oxygen and send it into the bloodstream. A few fish can take in oxygen in other ways. Fishes have lots of muscles that enables them to swim in water because water has lots of density. Fish remain buoyant and move up and down in water by decreasing or increasing the amount of air in their swim bladders. Some fish also use their swim bladder in intensifying sound. Most fish have a protective covering of scales made out of calcium which protect fish from injury and sickness. Another important adaptation of fish is the staying power. It can stay hydrated and retain a lot of water and proper salt balance, which is a special challenge for saltwater fish. Ingesting too much salt is not good, so saltwater fish drink and excrete salt through their urine and gills. Freshwater fish take in water through their gills and skin and then pass it out also. In Nigeria, fish meals are enjoyed everywhere. Pepper soup is one of the most sought out fish meal, especially in the Niger Delta areas. Fish and stews are off the planet, very delicious. Among so much nutrients you can get from fish, fish provides protein to the body and protein as we know helps to build the body blocks. Hmm, bon appetit. Welcome back. I hope you learned one or two things on the food and health segment. Well, I don't want to bore you. Let us go back to the kitchen so we can continue our cooking. This is MITV Kitchen and I'm yours truly, Anwe, presenting. We'll be right back. Our pot is on a fire and it's bubbling as you can see. Step nine, that's where we are now. We stir the food on fire to check to see if it is cooking very well and not burning. Okay, the next step is step 10. The last thing to add is your pumpkin or ugu leaf. This is added next or last so that the nutrients are not lost. When you put it in, stir properly to make sure it is all well stirred together. It is very, very important. And voila, that's the final product looking all sumptuous and ooh, so exotic. A different way to prepare your potatoes. Stay with me, people, as we go right on to the next segment. African snacks. Fried yam. Fried yam is a deep fried yam recipe and a very rich African Nigerian snack. It is fried in such a way that the outside of the chips is crunchy while the inside is moist. Its basic recipe is yam, which is the king of crops in Nigeria. Yam is native to Africa. There are over 200 cultivated varieties. Yes, you didn't know that, did you? Well, white yam tuber, which is mostly used in preparing fried yam, or dundun in Yoruba, is roughly cylindrical in shape. The skin is smooth and brown, and the flesh is usually white and firm. 
fried yam is a good snack any day any time mornings and evenings are usually the rush hour when the snack is mostly consumed not that it cannot be eaten in the afternoon or any other time like i said initially the basic ingredients for you to prepare fried yam snack is your basic yam and of course you need your oil you can either use palm oil or granite oil depending on your choice well you start by peeling the back of the yam very well and you cut into small chunks so that when you fry you actually get the feel of what you desire just cut it up and wash thoroughly making sure that all the sand is out and something else you need salt to taste also so after cutting up make sure your oil is on fire and very hot and after you add your salt to taste you now pour in your yam and you stir properly and when it is done it begins to change color you now pack and place on paper towels to get out the excess oil you can actually eat yam in a lot of other ways if you do not want to eat it just the way it is as a snack you know in Nigeria yam also can be taken as a meal apart from being a snack you can eat it with sauce you can eat it with chicken you can eat it with fish you can eat it you know with stew with meat you can actually eat fried yam with some fried eggs. There are a lot of exotic ways that you can turn your fried yam into something different depending on your choice and how adventurous you are. Well, this is our snack for the week. Our fried yam or dun dun as it is pronounced in Yoruba. Bon appétit! Did you see how to prepare sweet potato porridge? Easy, isn't it? Wonderful, beautiful. It is tasty. It is healthy. You should try it. Well, we'll take a short break now and go on, you know, to the next segment on our bill, which is the losing weight segment. A lot of people want to lose weight, but they do not want to do exercises. So I have decided to bring you ways that you can actually lose weight and not have to do any exercise. And today we're looking on how to turn up those ties. A flat stomach is possible to keep. Well, these are some of the tips to go about it without actually exercising and breaking your back or your neck. It is possible. So step number one, instead of three large meals a day that can fill your belly and fax your digestive system, eat small frequent meals of snacks Eat your meals about two to three hours apart. That will take up less space in your stomach, cause less expansion, keep your metabolism up and keep you feeling very full all through the day. Number two, reduce your intake of high fiber foods. Many high fiber foods like beans and the like cause gas and bloating. Eliminate them from your diet during the week. When one week is over, gradually add them back. This way, you'll definitely keep your tummy all looking trim and proper. Number three, adjust your fruit and veggie portions. While raw vegetables and fruits are great choices for overall health, they cause your stomach to stretch. So it's best to eat them in small portions, spread them throughout the day. Number four, check for a lactose intolerance if you have allergies or react to dairy products and they give you gas or bloating and may have problems digesting lactose the sugar found in dairy instead eat low lactose foods such as yogurt consume only small amount of milk if you must take milk 
Number five, eat potassium rich foods. Potassium rich foods including avocado, mini bananas, mango, non-fat yogurt made without artificial sweeteners. Potassium is a natural diuretic, so it will help reduce water retention and puffiness. Well, people, these are my five, five tips on losing weight without exercising. You know, that's the way we'll do it on our program. We do not want you to break your neck, pay huge bills, go into the gym when you can just do it naturally. Well, until next week, is stay trim, stay healthy. It is possible. Welcome back. It was easy, wasn't it? Wonderful. So, I'm not going to waste your time. We're going right on to the next segment on our program, which is the tip for the week. <music> Tips of the week. Nigeria is blessed with abundance of tomatoes year in, year out. The season always flourishing no matter the weather. Although the price may fluctuate depending on the season or the situation in the country. Tomatoes is a perishable vegetable, but do you know there are ways you can preserve them over as long as six months to up to a year without it going bad or rotten? Let me show you on our tips for the week. Well, number one, you can actually freeze them. You can put them in nylon bags and put them in a deep freezer. Once they turn to tomato marbles, you can now put them into jars and keep them. Number two, you can place them on small trays and put them in the freezer. When they turn into tomato pebbles, you put them into jars and return them to the freezer or zip top bags and return them to the fridge. Number three, you can dry them out in the sun until they are really dried up. You pack them and put them into plastic or jars and place them back into the freezer. Number four, you can also dry them in an oven, but the preservation is different. You add some vegetable oil into the jar before putting them into the freezer. Now, there's a difference between drying with the sun and drying with the oven. Yes, one is natural and the other one is not. Step number five, you can blend them. After blending, you can boil them on fire until all the water evaporates. Then you scoop them into jars and pour vegetable oil on them to preserve them. And you just place them into your freezer, just like your tomato puree. These are some of the ways that you can actually preserve your excess tomatoes without letting it go bad or rotten. It is important for you to save money and be more inventive in your way and style of living. So all those excess tomatoes can be preserved. Don't throw them away. Just follow the steps and keep some money. Welcome back. Welcome back. You've been entertained. I know you've been entertained. Well, this is the time where I have to say goodbye to you. It's been a wonderful time being on this program with you. I know you've learned a lot, especially our main menu for today being sweet potato porridge. Well, go to the market and get yourself some sweet potatoes and just knock yourself out. Until I come your way same time next week, it is yours truly, Anne Benitez saying, be good. Bye-bye.